Hello and welcome to our Cleviscope FRA impedance measurement tour. We'll be looking at all the components you can see here, which include capacitors and inductors, a transformer, and also an SMT measurement jig that we made ourselves just using three BNCs. It's good for probing small 0603 and 0805 and 1206 components. First of all, We'll start off by looking at the Cleviscope native performance, just to get a baseline of what we can do. Here's the setup for the Cleviscope native gain phase test, just to check on how the unit on its own performs. We've just got two equal length coax cables coming out from the back there, and they go around and connect in channel A and channel B using 50 ohm terminations. Hello. Here's the Cleviscope natural gain phase plot using just straight BNC cables and 50 ohm terminations. As you can see on the A channel, which is the gain, we're getting variation of about plus or minus 60 milliDB each way. On the phase side, we're seeing about 2 degree variation. At 65 megahertz, 2 degrees is about 85 picoseconds. Not too bad, I think. Here's the simple setup for our first component test. We're going to measure a capacitor. Here it is. The capacitor is connected in series with a 47 ohm resistor, which acts as our reference resistor. And we have our grounds on this side, and our signal generator is feeding in on this side. You can see it's connected here to the back of the cleviscope, which is a signal generator output. We're probing across the capacitor, Channel B probe is connecting to channel B, and channel A is going to the other side of the capacitor. There. Let's try this out now. This is our first test, that capacitor. Let's run it. As you can see, the capacitor value is about 100 nanofarad. Its bandwidth is only about a megahertz. It starts falling off at that point. And in fact, if you look at the effective series resistance, it's gone negative about there. That tells us that it's gone inductive. This is the point at which the equivalent inductance and the capacitance of the capacitor are the same. This is also called the self-resonant frequency. So we can see that if we were using this as a decoupling capacitor, we wouldn't want to decouple signals of greater than megahertz with it. I thought I'd try a 100 nanofarad ceramic cap so here we go. Interestingly, it has the same characteristic. It starts falling off at about a megahertz. The self resonant frequency is just a tad higher, but it's not much in it. Very interesting. Here's the 22 nanofarad capacitor. Let's see what this does. As you can see, the self resonant frequency is now much higher the capacitance starts to fall off at around 7 megahertz rather than the 1 megahertz that we saw with the 100 nanofarad. We'll go to a smaller capacitor yet and see what that does. Here's an 82 picofarad leaded ceramic capacitor. As we can see the uh, point of fall off is now up there at about 40 megahertz. So the these lower value capacitors are much better for use in uh, filtering and smoothing on power supplies uh, than the higher value capacitors. It's good to be able to test SMT components such as 0603, 0805 and 1206 components. So we took three BNCs, put them onto a bit of Vero board with a 50 ohm R reference and connected it all up as you can see. Here's a plot of the fixture we made with the three BNCs connected on Vero board. As you can see, we're seeing a capacitance of plus or minus 200 femtofarads. So it's not too bad. I'm going to try this now with a small ceramic 0603 capacitor. This is an 82 picofarad ceramic capacitor in our test fixture. We can see the self resonant frequency is actually 50 MHz, much lower than I expected. I couldn't find much data about this, but here's an AVX document which shows that uh, for a 0.1 microfarad capacitor it's only about 10 to 20 megahertz the SRF and I guess 40 or 50 megahertz makes sense in terms of an 0603 chip size which is what this is. We've been doing capacitance and inductance measurements but we can also do impedance phase measurements. Let's select impedance and phase. 
we've got a 2.2 nanofarad capacitor attached. Let's start it. Okay, here you can see the impedance, and it's varying from about 700 ohms down to not very much at all. Up here is the phase, and as you can see, it's a capacitor, minus 90 degrees. Uh, up here, minus 88.883 degrees, and it reverses, which is what it does at cell resonance. We can also check out the losses in the capacitor by looking at the dissipation factor. Let's do that now. So far, we've measured capacitance and effective series resistance. We can also measure dissipation factor. This is a measure of the quality of the capacitor, how much energy is stored in the electric field rather than dissipated in the resistor. Good values are below 0.05. So let's try this 2.2 nanofarad capacitor. Okay, up here we can see the dissipation factor is about 0.02, about 20 milli values. Over here where we get to the self-resonant frequency, we can see the dissipation factor rises rapidly and most of the energy that's going into the capacitor is now being lost at the resonant point or is being converted into an inductor. It's quite a useful tool for working out how much loss you're going to get at the particular frequency you're interested in. Of course, we can do more than measure just capacitors. Let's do an inductor. We change to inductor, and again we're measuring the effective series resistance. We've got a little 100 microhenry bobbin inductor connected. Here's the plot. As you can see, it's about 100 microhenry. It falls off above the self-resonant frequency, which is about 5 megahertz. The effective series resistance is only 1 or 2 ohms, which increases rapidly as we get towards self-resonance. As well as being able to do the effective series resistance, we can choose quality factor for inductors. Let's start a sweep with a 100 microhenry bobbin inductor. We can see that the quality factor is about 68 to 70 and in the normal frequency range for the inductor and increases to a peak of about 153 and then falls off. This is the point at which the inductor loses its inductance and uh, we can see that down here. Very useful for figuring out whether or not this inductor is useful in your circuit given the frequency constraints that you have. By way of comparison, here's a 100 microhenry ferrite toroid. This is meant to be used in power magnetics. It's got much higher current capability. We can see that the peak of the inductance has now fallen from the 4 MHz that it was for the bobbin inductor down to 2 MHz. The quality factor, which was about 60 before, is now only 33 down to about 7. So this higher current carrying inductor doesn't have as high frequency capability as the bobbin inductor. Now I'd like to look at an aluminium electrolytic capacitor. I've heard bad things about these. We can set the off-sig-gen offset to say a volt which will polarize the capacitor as it should be. Um, I've set a much lower frequency range because I don't think they go as high. So let's just try. This is a 47 one. We need to take a bit more time at 300 hertz because uh, the capture time is longer. As you can see, the 47 microfarad capacitor is actually about 43 microfarad at 300 hertz, and it falls off very rapidly. It's almost nothing by the time you get to 100 kilohertz. Not a useful solution for anything other than 50 or 100 hertz, really. Uh, the effective series resistance is of the order of 1 ohm down to about point. 6 ohms or so. Finally in the capacitor inductor stakes I thought I'd check a old 2000 microfarad electrolytic. Here we go. Because we're starting at very low frequency now, 30 hertz, these old electrolytics were designed for 50 hertz bridge rectifiers. 
You can see it is about 2000 microfarads, but it's falling off very rapidly. So even at uh, 300 hertz or so, it's down to a quarter of what it should have been. And by the time you get to 2 kilohertz, you've got no capacitance left. The effective series resistance is quite low at about 0.4 ohm. So, very useful in a 50 hertz application, but not useful at all above that. If you're into winding magnetics, it's often useful to check out the magnetics that you've wound to make sure that the gain phase is correct, the leakage inductance and the leakage capacitance and the uh, primary inductance are all correct. You can use uh, the FRA to do all these things. Let's start off by looking at the gain phase of a transformer that I just happened to have found in my box. It's a little uh, 3H1 RM6 pot core as far as I can recall. We're starting at 30 Hertz and as you can see the gain is unity at 30 Hertz. And it carries on being unity up to about 80 kilohertz, where we see the phase tra suddenly transition. Uh, and uh, we see a peak gain of about 5 dB before it all falls off. So things were good to about here, and then the transformer uh, swapped phases. I guess that's because it's got lots of interwinding capacitance. Let's check that out next. Here you can look at the photo and you see that we're using the transformer with shorted windings on the primary and shorter winding on the secondary to measure the interwinding capacitance, just as a unit under test, using our 47 ohm resistor. Let's start. Okay, I've done the test from 10 kilohertz because we are really interested in the high frequency performance of the transformer. And we see a capacitance somewhere between 24 picofarads and 17 picofarads at 5 megahertz. Now, that may or may not be important to you, but at least you know what it is. Now we're going to measure the transformer primary inductance, a very important measure of how well you've wound the transformer. You can see the setup here. Let's start. Again, we want to do it from low frequency because the primary inductance is very important at low frequency, for low frequency operation. Right, we see that the inductance is 122 millihenry. This may or may not be what you designed for. We can also see the effect of series of resistance, which is about 6.8 ohms, which sets the losses in the transformer. You can also see this transformer is really only useful up at about 8 kilohertz, where we get a phase reversal of the uh, series of resistance and the uh, inductance rapidly drops off. A final value of interest in transformer design is the leakage inductance. We measure this by shorting the secondary, as in this photo. Let's start. Okay, so we see initial leakage inductance of around 4 milli Henry, and then this is dropping as the frequency increases, as we expect. We're interested in the leakage inductance to high frequencies because it limits the maximum frequency response of the transformer. The leakage inductance at high frequencies here is 202 microhenry. This may or may not be useful to you. You can also measure the total uh, effective series of resistance of the transformer through both windings. And here you can see that it is 7.9 ohms. Modern circuit boards, especially those with FPGAs, high-speed micros and fast memories require low impedance across the entire frequency range. Using the FRA, you can measure the impedance of the ground plane. Here are the scope probes and a connector for the SIGGEN connected up to the 3.3 volt power plane of one of our boards. We are interested in knowing how well this power plane performs over the frequency range. Now this is the first time we've ever done this. So it comes as a bit of a surprise. We can see that here at 48 kilohertz, we have a portion of our ground plane which has much higher impedance than the rest. 
it's 0.8 ohms. Most of our ground plane is down there at about 22 milliohms. Ideally, the ground plane should be less than 50 milliohms. So you can see we meet it for most of it, but not at that 48 kilohertz point. You can see the FRA is a very useful tool for debug debugging the power supply design of your board. Finally, in this sequence of testing various things, we've got an ISOMAX video isolation transformer which we thought we'd like to check out. So I'm going to look at this gain phase. Just to start, I did a quick check to see that the gain phase for the blank connections was good. And as you can see, it that's a straight line that's on there right now. So I'll start a sweep. We're going to go from 300 hertz to 65 megahertz. So the gain is uh, down just a tiny tad, uh, which is minus 0.8 dB. Phase is looking pretty good. And there we can see a phase reversal up here at uh, about about uh, 14 megahertz. The transformer is only rated for 7 megahertz, so this is pretty good. So the transformer is useful uh, to minus 3 dB. Let's see. Um, that's minus 7, minus... Yeah, about minus 3 dB. Uh, it's useful between up to about 3 megahertz. Still pretty useful. Okay, that wraps it up. There's a whole lot of things we've tested with gain, phase, inductance, capacitance. Perhaps the Cleviscope gain, phase, frequency response analyzer is useful to you. Thanks for watching.